Okay, part two of this uh, lovely video here. Uh, letters to the capitalists. Um, where did we get that from? Well, we got it from. Glad you asked. We got it from um, Mark chapter six. I've got it. I'm not going to read the chapter um, for time's sake. I'm going to challenge you guys to get into your word and read um, Mark chapter six. Uh, or pardon me, Mark chapter 5 for yourself, verse 1. Um, many of you may know the story of the uh, demon-possessed man who was demon-possessed by, by, by Legion. Uh, Legion uh, was many demons. In fact, it was thousands of demons that was in this man's life. Um, to kind of go through a brief overview of the, uh, the first part of this chapter, starting with verse 1, uh, we hear about a man named Legion who has been uh, it says he was in the tombs. Um, I think many people from the area had tried to help this man out, and they just couldn't do anything. And it became like a public nuisance for the for the town. So they literally chained him up in tombs. Um, and most of us may know what tombs are there for. Um, it says that he would, would cry out at the top of his lungs and cut himself and scream out. This man was was hurting guys. Uh, he was in a world full of trouble and he was so deep that he was in the tombs and and he was dead um, spiritually and um, if you think about that for a minute, for, the, for those of you who think it may be cool to be demon possessed or um, to say that you run with the devil have no idea what you're talking about because uh, if you speak to anyone who's ever been demon possessed literally and it happens. Um, they're in toil. They're in. Uh, they're in trouble, and their lives are not happy. They're not great. Um, it says here we have an example of this. This man would cry out at the top of his lungs. Um, then we come to find out that Jesus comes to the shore, and uh, they dock there to the shore, um, and Jesus gets out, and and this man meets and and has an encounter with the Almighty. Jesus Christ, who saved his life, uh, cast these demons out, and we come to find that this man was so excited because he, like I said, he was he was in toil. His life was ruined because of these demons in his life. And after Jesus, uh, these demons left his body, and uh, Jesus cast these demons out. This man was so excited, he wanted to go with God right then and there, or, right, or with Jesus right then and there. And Jesus said, no, go back to your family and go to Decapolis and give them the message about what's been done for you today. And Decapolis was a 10-region uh, city area. Um, so that's kind of where it comes from, uh, letters to Decapolis. What... And like I said, I'll get more into this as we go through each week, as we go through what each song is talking about from track one to the ending of the CD. But something I want you guys to understand first and foremost, and this is kind of the brief, the CD kind of goes through uh, some different directions, but it all leads to the same thing. Um, we find out in Ephesians that we don't fight against flesh and blood, we fight against principalities of darkness, guys. And... These demons had attached themselves to this man's life, and his life was going nowhere uh, but in the tombs. And he was chained up, and he would cut himself and cry out. Many of you, I know that I can sympathize with that man. There's been so many times in my life that, that I've literally cried out after I've made mistakes or, or after I had um, done some of the things that I've done in my life, like with alcohol and premarital sex and pornography and where I would be in those tombs and I'd be crying out going, God, why did I do that again? You know, God, I'm so sorry. And time after time after time, I would continue to fall. And I realized that I had things in my life and things around my life that I needed to get rid of. And they were spiritual in nature. In nature. And I think that's one of the biggest things that Satan tries to do is try tries to convolute our minds. Um... I think so many times we just get busy in our life. We just we go to work, we work our nine to five, or we go to school. Um, if you're a husband or a father, you you go home to your family, 
and you go to bed at night and you go through the same routine over and over and over again not realizing that the things that impact your life are spiritual in nature and that you have a power and authority through Jesus Christ over these things guys whether you need healing or whether there's a spirit of depression around your life or anxiety or worry or fear or drug addiction or alcohol addiction these things are demonic in nature and these things have attached themselves to your life to hold you down and to give you an oppressive spirit that you have the power and authority through Jesus Christ to break and it's only through meeting and having an encounter with Jesus Christ as the only way to get these things off of your life guys in the days that we have coming up ahead uh, there are so many people who are hurting these days guys uh, the economy is terrible you hear of people being out of jobs I mean I hear about cancer more now than I ever have before and, and ailments uh, people are hurting whether it be spiritually mentally uh, physically and these are all demonic in nature and we have again I'll say it we have a power and authority over these things in Jesus Christ it's time for us to rise up to see the shape of our lives and, and the shape of this this world of, of where we sit today and it's time to pray these things off of our lives so that we can take this world the message like that man did to Decapolis he knew that he had come and he had had an encounter with an almighty Jesus Christ that no one else could help this man out but Jesus Christ himself and he was so excited that he wanted to go with Jesus right then and there and Jesus said no go to your family and go to Decapolis before we can take this world the message your family or the people around you there's things that might have to be broken off of your life whether it be sin addictions and I've been there and addictions are not a very pleasing thing to be tied down to something um, like that whether it be alcohol or, or sex or maybe you just don't love enough. Maybe you go out and tell the world about Jesus, but then two hours later you get in a car and someone cuts you off in traffic and you cuss them out within the edge of your life. Um, that's something I used to have a problem with. And sometimes I still have a problem with when I get angry at people driving. That's one of the biggest things I get angry at people at is when I drive. And I get so upset and I shake my finger. I give them like the evil eye like I want to fight somebody. And it's stupid, guys. And... There's this oppressive spirit that's uh, that's on this nation today that has captivated this nation today. And it's a spirit of hatred. It's a spirit of not loving people. It's a spirit of, of not giving people the truth either, giving people a false sense of security about who Jesus is. Jesus uh, and God are are people who, who love, and, and they love so much, are spirits who love so much. But we also need to understand that, that there is judgment and there is a consequence for sin and we need to give them the truth in love um, we don't need to be holier than thou we don't need to be mightier than, than someone else because we've all been through sin in our life we've all had addictions we've all had those demonic oppressions in our life and the only way that we can learn to fight Satan back is through loving people but we also have to give them the truth and it's a and we should we should understand that we should fear God and it's not an actual fear. What it means is a respect. When you respect his power, his authority, and who he is, that's the way that we should treat God, is we should fear him in respect and in awe of who he is, the King of kings and Lord of lords. I want to read you guys something that I just read on Facebook tonight. And it was so cool. It says, an old Cherokee told his grandson, my son, there is a battle between two wolves inside all of us. One is evil. It is anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, inferiority, lies, and ego. The other wolf is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. The boy thought about this for a second and asked his grandfather, which wolf wins? The old man quietly replied, the one you feed. Let me say that again. The old man replied, the one you feed. Guys, it's time for us to break things off of our lives. And the power and authority of Jesus Christ, that he gives us the power through his Holy Spirit, that as he ascended into heavens, he left us a, a, a confidant, a friend. He left us the power, and that's through the Holy Spirit. Some churches will try to, to restrain that Holy Spirit, and um, some people will try to, to hold it back. 
And that's one of the most powerful things that we have to fight Satan with and, and, and the demons from hell, which is our enemy. It's not that person who cuts you off in traffic. We need to understand that, that things that we go through are demonic in nature. We do not fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities of darkness. Guys, it is my prayer and it is this band's prayer that you see this battle for what it is and it's spiritual in nature. Everything can be can be come back. It's not political. It's not religiosity. It goes back to demonic in nature. It goes back to sin. We've got to get our hearts right and take this world the message. This world is tired of Christians who don't believe in the power that they say that they they believe in. Thank you guys for watching and keep in tune uh, or stay in tune rather to our YouTube page for for more videos coming up. Um, on each one of the songs starting with Lead Us Into Battle which will be the first track off of the album that will be the next video that you see thank you guys so much for checking it out tell your family and friends and uh, have them come out to the page as well we love you guys so much thanks and have a great day